Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to this ECOL webinar. Pleasure to be here again with you for this third webinar uh, leading up to our ECOL roundtable uh, end of November in Toronto. Thank you for being with us. Just a quick reminder of some basic housekeeping rules. So the OECD ERIA team will be having a conversation with our expert guest, Franca Cantoni, for the first half an hour. And then at the end, we will have a Q&A session moderated by Julia Armoni Massan. And uh, but please keep your mic on mute and channel any questions that you may have through the chat. Thank you very much. I leave now to Rafael. I pass the floor to Rafael. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. It's a pleasure for me to host this uh, webinar uh, with uh, Professor Franca Cantoni. Franca is Professor of Business Organization and Human Resource Management at the Università Cattolica del Sacro Cuore which means a Catholic University of the Sacred Heart uh, in uh, the Piacenza campus in uh, the hearth of Emilia Romagna, which is uh, one of the most beautiful regions in Italy. Um, Franca, uh, we are very happy to, to, to host you here because uh, at a certain point, uh, you know, we, 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 we go back uh, uh, several, several uh, years, but we crossed again and we discovered that we were interested in working on the same thing and that you actually had developed uh, a lot of knowledge and uh, evidence about something that we cherish that is the entrepreneurial mindset so uh, without further ado franca i would uh, ask you the, the straight the, the first question and uh, i would uh, you know, ask you about your activities, of course, uh, uh, your research activities, and uh, uh, what is the triggered uh, in you this interest of uh, investigating the transversal skills, what we call the entrepreneurship uh, or entrepreneurial skills, and the way in which you have uh, defined the, this uh, soft uh, transversal skills. Um, and you know uh, the experimental techniques that you are using uh, in your current uh, research. Franca, the floor is yours. Welcome. So thank you very much. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here today with you discussing about the project that we have started, uh, let me say, more or less one year ago. And I'm here to present the preliminary results of, uh, the, pro of the project uh, and uh, also on behalf of the other participants of, uh, of the research group. The research group is composed of uh, six uh, um, professionals. Two of them are um, specialists uh, in the human resource management. The other two are psychologists and there are other two researchers much more, much more more involved in uh, quantitative uh, methods. A um, few words uh, on the organization of the project. Uh, uh, so the project involved uh, uh, professors uh, as well as the uh, administrative offices of the university. Um, we uh, invited uh, some, uh, some teams and some offices. First of all, the information system offices, the career service office uh, for the students, uh, innovation and special projects office, and some other offices because we need to have some information, some data about our students. And we started from here, we started from a principle and we observed the final grades of the students at the end of the academic path and we observed that uh, um, they are just a good representation of the technical skills that they have acquired during the academic path. The final grade that a fresh graduate receives uh, at the end of uh, his or her journey doesn't represent uh, the person under the uh, full perspective. And we have the impression that the technical grade is just a metric and it doesn't include some important information. Let me say that the basic information which are not included in the final evaluation are the transversal skills. We feel that the technical grade is limited in scope. Uh, is limited in scope because uh, it doesn't consider 
for example, all the transversal skills. For example, if a student is involved in social activities and he acts as a volunteer, for example, all these abilities are not included in the technical grade he or she receives at the end of, uh, of the time. For example, here in Italy, we've got a commission, which is called the Teacher Students Joint Commission, where the students uh, can show up uh, some criticism about the structure or some criticism about how the courses are organized or other uh, criticalities. Uh, and this requires lots of uh, uh, skills, technical skills, as well as transversal skills. And why do not consider all these abilities, all the skills that the students develop during the, uh, the journey? And another element we need to take into consideration, especially here in Italy, is related to the fact that the final uh, um, exams are mostly written exams. We've got uh, big classes up to 250 students. And this can represent a problem because we need to, uh, in a certain sense, have standardized uh, exams and standardized uh, tools uh, uh, to measure the final results of the exam. So uh, we do not have uh, oral exams or other kind of, uh, of tests at the end of the course. And it's not so easy also to have intermediate assignments during a, a, a class uh, because of the high number of students uh, in each uh, in each course. So there are some uh, specificity in the Italian systems uh, and we have decided uh, to uh, start working on this uh, project. The results of, of the project that we are working on can be very useful also for uh, some of the uh, offices inside the university, for example. We've got a uh, internship and placement office, for example. And nevertheless, the crisis uh, here in Italy, uh, we do not have problems in placing our students uh, on the job market, but we cannot offer a customized uh, uh, service in the sense that we do not, we do not know the uh, full profile of the uh, of the students of the graduate. We just know the technical grade that he or she receives uh, when he discusses the uh, the thesis. And I think that this is a limitation. Another limitation is about the fact that we are involved in the accreditation process. And the uh, certifying bodies require lots of investment in the analysis and evaluation of the soft skills of uh, our students. And when they come, when the students come to the job market, another limitation is that the uh, prospective employer doesn't know anything about these transversal skills. The only measure that they have is the final grade, which is not an expression of the uh, of the, the person as uh, as a whole. So this is the is the premise of our uh, research. Uh, our research question is very simple: Can we overcome all this kind of uh, limitation? Can we offer an holistic approach uh, to our to our students? Uh, a few words about the current state uh, of the art here in Italy. In Italy, uh, we already have a similar project, which is uh, uh, which is born in 2012, if I'm not wrong. It was signed by the Agency for the um, National Evaluation of the University System and the uh, Research, ANGU in Italy, and it was placed inside the uh, AVA system, uh, um, self-assessment, periodic evaluation, and accreditation process that each university in Italy is supposed to uh, undergo. It was a pilot project, including only five university, the Polytechnic of Turin, the University of Messina, the University of Padua, Tor Gargata in Rome, and the University of Salento was a pilot project in line with the European standards and guidelines uh, uh, for quality assurance, because it's really important to guarantee the quality of the experience of the students. Uh, we are 
working really serious on the student-centered uh, learning uh, experience. So it is consistent with, but we have the impression that the uh, transversal skills uh, are not explicative of the whole bunch of the uh, skills needed to be effective on the market. Uh, only four uh, transversal skills were examined, uh, mainly numeracy, literacy, civics, uh, and uh, problem solving. So starting from this consideration, we decided to uh, work uh, on this new project, which is called uh, the uh, Soft and Study Skills Project. I will mention the uh, study skills during this seminar. I will focus my attention only on the uh, transversal skills, on the soft skills. And it is a pilot study, and at this point, we can only share some preliminary results, not, uh, not a lot, but at least some preliminary uh, results. And uh, four faculties are involved, Faculty of Economics and Law, the Faculty of Agriculture, the Faculty of Banking, and the Faculty of uh, uh, Economics. And they are four out of 12 uh, faculties of the Università Cattolica del Sacro Cuore. So as I Thank told... you, Franca. So, yes. Sorry. <laughs> I'm too long. I'm too long. I'm no, too... no. I, I, I know that Maria has another question for you. Okay. Thank you, Franca. Yeah, no, it was just uh, if you could uh, tell us more about um, the, the, the results of your pilot study. Um, what are the implications from a pedagogical perspective? How can we improve teaching and learning based on these findings? Yes, yes. Uh, so I will be very, very brief uh, and I will try to go straight uh, uh, to the point. So we uh, have decided to build up a new questionnaire a new one uh, where we include uh, lots of uh, transversal skills. And the aim of the project is to try to provide a kind of awareness of the relevance of the transversal skills to be successful both uh, on a private as well as a professional point uh, uh, of view. We validated uh, the uh, questionnaire by administering it uh, to uh, 360, maybe more uh, students. And uh, the idea is to understand their level of awareness about uh, some uh, specific uh, soft skills. Uh, a few words uh, will be very uh, brief about the preliminary results of the, of the, of the question. Um, the assessment. Uh, we decided to use the self-assessment uh, provisionally. We are aware of the fact that there are lots of uh, tools that can be used to measure the uh, transversal skills, which are subjective in their, in their nature. And at the moment, we believe that the self-assessment is the most uh, uh, adequate uh, uh, way that we can use. We know that we can use uh, project-based evaluation, we can use a simulation, we can use uh, observation, uh, and maybe in the future, we will integrate uh, the, uh, the tools that we have initially uh, used. Uh, population, which are the students uh, interested in this kind of project? Uh, 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 we have decided to address this uh, questionnaire to, the, to both the graduate as well as undergraduate students. And uh, we addressed uh, uh, the, uh, the questionnaire to the second year students of the undergraduate um, level and the first year of the master's degree uh, students because we feel like, like um, to be uh, effective uh, while compiling the questionnaire, they have to be confident with the structure, they have to be confident with the uh, profile they are attending. Uh, so there are lots of limitations in, the in uh, deciding to measure these soft skills by using uh, self-evaluation. But we, we feel like if we measure is because we would like to value, to give a value to the uh, uh, soft skills of the, uh, of the students. 
uh, about the output, uh, about uh, the uh, results. We have just delivered the first wave of uh, questionnaire and now we are collecting the preliminary uh, results. Uh, after uh, a student has compiled the, uh, the questionnaire, he or she receives uh, in few days a report where he or she can position himself, herself, um, inside the court of students uh, who decided to compile uh, the, uh, the question. And it can have a, a sort of overview of uh, the skills and at the same time, he or she can position himself or herself on par, on average, above the average or under the average. So we, uh, we assist uh, in a certain sense the students uh, in reading uh, the, uh, the question, in reading the results, so he can have uh, a quick impression on how he or she is positioned according to uh, the, the other students. From the university side, uh, uh, we can have some impacts also on the university side because, uh, for example, uh, when we provide this kind of reports, uh, customized report to all the students participating, on the other side, we can obtain lots of information uh, uh, about the data we can gather from uh, the, uh, the questionnaire. Uh, for example, we can examine if there is a sort of relationship, a positive relationship between the technical skills, the marks they have received uh, at the end of the course, and some specific uh, um, transversal skills. This is the first research question we can work on. From the uh, pedagogical point of view, for example, uh, we can uh, examine if we need to modify the content of our courses uh, to reinforce the use of the, uh, of the specific soft skills, soft skills, for example, or if we need to modify the way we deliver the final exam or the tools we use to deliver the final exam. So we can align uh, the way we teach the courses and the way we administer the final exam uh, in order to strengthen the use of the specific soft skills that we have uh, identified. And uh, the last point, for example, we can also um, use the, the data that we obtain from this question uh, in order to address our, our teacher, our professor, uh, and uh, train them to uh, make their students aware of the, uh, of the use uh, they can do on their transversal skills. So the impacts are, uh, are, are numerous in the sense that uh, we can have some positive effects on the students as well as uh, on the faculty and as well as on the administrative offices. We are in the, at the beginning of the project uh, and we have just delivered the questionnaire to the undergraduate students. During next semester, we will deliver the same questionnaire to the master students. And so we will have a richer population and maybe we can start aggregating uh, uh, the, the results that we have initially obtained. Uh, thank you very much, Franca. It's, it's very interesting for us, uh, your discussion, also because uh, <clears throat> you discussed that from an Italian perspective, but it is what we see in many countries, honestly. So what you perceive as an Italian perspective is in reality quite uh, international. And I also like the fact that uh, there is a focus for you, what you call soft skills, transversal skills, uh, and we tried to impose on you entrepreneurship almost, yes. but uh, it was also because uh, we think that uh, entrepreneurship is a tool, is a pedagogical tool to help individuals in this case uh, students to develop the skills that you mentioned uh, that we discover thanks to evidence which is the first and most important thing that you need are actually uh, affecting their performance in a multi-dimensional way so from the academic perspective but also from the placement perspective and what i really liked is this idea of services so the improving 
of the services that you can deliver to students. You know, also we, this individual reporting, I would have loved to have that at my <laughs> at my time, long time ago. But it's it would be super effective to uh, avoid the frustration uh, to to uh, individuals and help them improve what they are better off instead of improving what they are not good at. Um, and uh, and and also this discussion of placing that is super important uh, because placement is an activity that is very much bilateral in the sense that there is a lot of information generated by placing or placement that uh, you as an academic as a university can use to improve your pedagogical activities but also improve the collaboration activities con your with your ecosystem and so placing better people more satisfied uh, you know that have a mindset that is more uh, you know, proactive and uh, effective in the labor market. So sorry about it. I was very excited about the, about your 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 study. But my question is now: uh, it's it's almost what we can do for you in the sense that uh, what is uh, you see as uh, is needed to scale up these uh, activities this activity research of course uh, we are we are vest we have a vested interest in uh, in reinforcing the link on entrepreneurship uh, but also what is that we can do to generate uh, I don't know, a consortium of uh, higher education institutions so now I'm blue skying but you know uh, to to really, take advantage of what you did, generate momentum, and uh, scale up this activity at an international level. Please. Yes, I would like to add something, uh, and I would like to say that we do not just offer a service for our students, but we need to offer, we would like to offer a customized service in the sense that we would like to provide some additional information to put our students in the position of uh, uh, facing in a proper way the, the job uh, uh, market. And uh, how to scale up our, our project. Uh, at the moment, uh, uh, we cannot insert uh, this report inside the final certificate that the student receives uh, at the end of the academic, of the academic uh, journey. And we just offer a customized uh, report. Um, as, uh, uh, as an institution, uh, you should do a lot of, uh, a lot of things, I mean, First of all, uh, we uh, would like to create a sort of a digital badge for our students. Digital badge means that we would like to uh, certificate, uh, to give a certificate, a real certificate to our students, a sort of a transcript uh, containing uh, the measurement, the value of the soft skills that we have measured during uh, uh, the uh, academic uh, path. So the digital badge uh, offers a sort of formal recognition of the um, of the uh, evaluation of the soft skills uh, detected, and uh, you you should uh, act as a sort of uh, third entity willing to give some certification. This is the first point uh, where you can offer a kind of uh, support. The second support that you can offer, uh, we need to find some uh, funds in order to uh, continue with, uh, with the project. We need to find funding for the project from a private point of view, and we also need to uh, receive and collect some uh, uh, external uh, uh, funds. Uh, uh, for example, the the aid that we ask you is uh, that you should act as a, a sort of node inside a, a sort of consortium uh, or a sort of partnership uh, or uh, how to say a sort of alliance, a strategic alliance between different entities, uh, uh, universities, uh, um, other, other kind of, uh, of uh, institution. Uh, the idea is to uh, make this uh, project uh, go along and, uh, and continue. Um, 
I, I told you that the uh, the project has uh, some positive impacts uh, for the students, uh, for the companies, for the prospective uh, employers, and it has some impacts, uh, positive impacts also for the uh, universities. So I cannot see negative points in developing uh, this kind of project. I can see only positive uh, positive uh, aspects. But we need to um, give some voice to this kind uh, of project, maybe not only in Italy, if it is possible, we are interested in uh, finding some partners also in foreign countries. And I think that you should act as a sort of uh, pusher hmm, to this kind of uh, this activity. Th thank you very much, Franca. This is uh, we we will try to to offer visibility and to you know I call the platform is uh, done for for this is to try to generate to identify good practices and create the community of practice at the international level that could work together uh, to to exchange information. Thank you very much. Now, uh, as usual, is the time uh, for the questions and answers that will be moderated by Julia Aymone Marsan from Maria. Uh, let me open a, you know, a parenthesis. I would like to congratulate Julia for being elected as chair of the steering committee of the ECOL platform. Uh, so I'm sure that uh, Julia will help us uh, to give a huge visibility and, and, and scale up the initiative. Julia, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Rafael, for this advertisement. <laughs> uh, I'm very excited and uh, I will be very happy to work with all of you. Um, thank you also to Franca for the very interesting information that you shared. There are already some questions and we are perfectly on time. So I think we have enough time to discuss uh, uh, about those. The first question is about actually uh, whether, according to your experience, there's some kind of, uh, you know, standardization or, uh, you know, common practices across different EU countries when it comes to evaluation or even exams uh, uh, for students. That was certainly not the case when I studied, uh, um, you know, at university across different European countries. But of course, we would like to hear from Franca. And let me perhaps add a component to this question that is, what are the good practices that you have observed when it comes you know, to evaluating students uh, with different criteria, both in Italy, but also perhaps elsewhere in Europe? Yes, I don't think that we can discuss about the best practices because I think that all the practices need to uh, be uh, activated inside a specific context. Uh, here in Italy, uh, we have mainly written exams uh, and the final grade of the exam is defined uh, at the end of the course, so the student doesn't have a real possibility to build up the, the, the grade during the course. But it happens that the final grade is the one that the students receive at the end with the final exam. And here in Italy, we generally use uh, multiple choices tests just to analyze how precise is the preparation of the students and how that he or she masters uh, the technicalities of a certain discipline. Sometimes we also use uh, some uh, open questions, for example, uh, but uh, they do not really reflect the ability of the students to work on some transversal uh, uh, skills. They, uh, they aim it just to test the quality of the technical skills he or she has acquired during uh, uh, the course. Uh, uh, it's not so easy and not so common to have uh, an oral exam mm, at the at the end of the course because of the big number of uh, of uh, uh, students. So we got uh, some standard tools uh, that we uh, utilize, and this can represent uh, a kind of uh, criticism about the way we evaluate uh, uh, our students. And um, sometimes, especially for uh, courses where there are French students, uh, we use intermediate assignments. And this is, this is good because with the group assignment or intermediate assignments, we can uh, test some transversal skills. For example, we can test time management, we can test problem solving, we can test, for example, critical thinking. 
but uh, they do not have a specific uh, measurement. We just value the uh, global quality of the final assignment. So I'm not sure that uh, we can discuss about uh, um, best practices uh, because we are working on the definition of this kind of best practices. I'm not sure that they really exist. Thank you, Franca. And next, I mean, there's a question from Norris. You have already maybe a little bit uh, partly touched upon, uh, uh, you know, what he's asking about. Uh, but he would like you to focus a little bit on project-based learning because I think that all of us in this virtual room, we know that we know the benefits of it. We know that some universities within the EU and outside, uh, you know, are using uh, these methodologies, uh, and sometimes it could be extremely useful. There's research showing that, as Norris is reminding us. And actually, our first webinar, the one about Cornell Tech, in a sense, was all about, you know, these uh, these techniques and how we can use this project. So, what can you share with us about that? Yes, it's not so used uh, in Italy uh, for undergraduate students. Uh, I have to uh, make a premise. Uh, uh, we delivered, we administered the questionnaire both to undergraduate as well as master students. And as uh, it what concerns to undergraduate students, projects are not so common for the evaluation of, uh, of a course. And in Italy, uh, we do not use this kind of, uh, of tool. We really uh, use it not so, uh, it, it's not so common, but we use it for the master's, uh, for the master's uh, uh, students in the sense that at the beginning of the course, uh, some uh, uh, some teachers uh, uh, discuss uh, and discuss and deliver a, a project, and uh, they are supposed to um, discuss uh, intermediate the, the intermediate results with with the teacher, and for some specific courses, uh, they are supposed to give a final presentation to an external commission, and this is very useful for our students. For example, for the course of entrepreneurship that we have, the students are supposed to develop their own uh, private uh, business. Uh, they are supported by some facilitators and by some tutors uh, during the development of this kind of project. And at the end of the course, they are not evaluated only by the professor uh, that can evaluate only the technical quality of the of the final results they are supposed to sit in front of an external commission which is composed of uh, entrepreneurs or uh, some practitioners in specific discipline and they uh, must deliver a sort of of pitch of their of their uh, of their business and this is the the right way we can have and we will use it in the future because i told you that self evaluation is just a provisional way that we have decided to use to measure the universal skills and with the, this uh, final discussion that they are supposed to give to deliver to the external commission for example we can test uh, and we can measure and as a consequence we can value some specific transversal skills for example we can measure we can value the emotional control emotional control is the ability to deliver a good quality of the speech uh, trying to make a sort of tuning uh, with the uh, with the audience. It's not easy to uh, control uh, emotions when you speak in uh, in a public uh, that you do not uh, you do not uh, know. Uh, another transversal skills that can be used and can be measured is uh, time management. Mm, the ability to manage in a proper way a limited amount of time. So I think Norris that project, uh, uh, the project-based evaluation should be extremely relevant for the measurement and for the evaluation of the soft skills. And this is the reason why we probably, we will implement it and we will use it, but uh, uh, only for the master's uh, students. We cannot apply it to the undergraduate students. Thank you, Franca. I think that was very, very interesting. And uh, it, I mean, it's fully consistent with my observation that are more on an anecdotal basis. Uh, but having worked with a lot of higher education institutions in many different places around the world, 
I can also add that some often students are really excited. I mean, it's really about uh, learning while having fun. And this is something that, as you mentioned, uh, in some places are perhaps a little bit uh, underexploited as uh, underused as, as a learning tool. And it's, it's a little bit of a pity. Uh, before I'm asking um, me, myself, a question to Franca, I just would like to highlight that I think that this idea of a consortium that Raffaele was uh, perhaps uh, highlighting before is already taking shape in our chat box uh, between Norris, Vitor, uh, thanks to what Franca is saying. And it could be something that perhaps uh, for us uh, of a call, uh, it would be an uh, idea worth exploring further, even beyond you know, this conversation that is only lasting 45 minutes, because we know that sometimes it's very difficult to find uh, evidence you know, about you know, what Franca was, was telling us. I mean, uh, there are a lot of case studies, uh, a lot of anecdotal evidence, uh, but even in terms of data collection, I think there's still a lot to do, uh, not only in Europe, in many other locations around the world. And everybody's talking about, you know, transversal skills, uh, the importance of it for the digital transformation and the complex challenges we need to face in, you know, economies and societies we are living. Uh, but at the end, I mean, uh, the, the evidence is still, uh, you know, very much lacking. Uh, but I mean, apart from this comment, I would be very interested to learn uh, how you interact uh, with the employers, so the private sector uh, in your ecosystem, because I'm sure that they can also give you a lot of very interesting feedback about uh, what you shared with us uh, and, you know, I mean, at the end, uh, how they can evaluate the competencies of students in terms of employability. Yes, this is a critical point. And uh, I'm here also in the role of the president of the Internship Commission. So I've got a direct contact with uh, the companies, with the private institution. And uh, with this direct contact, uh, we have the impression that um, they are open to accept uh, on board our students because they are fresh minded, because they got some technical uh, skills. But uh, the uh, the frequent uh, the frequent observation that the HR uh, responsible the HR directors uh, tells me is that uh, we need to invest a lot in assessment center and they are really expensive and uh, but we need it we need this kind of assessment because. Uh, uh, we are not aware of the uh, transversal skills that uh, our prospector employee uh, possess. And uh, so it's fundamental, I think, uh, for us to provide this kind of uh, badge, of digital badge, with a sort of uh, uh, report of the principal transversal, uh, transversal skills. The fact is that the transversal skills uh, uh, cannot be captured in a punctual way. They are dynamic, they evolve over time. So at least we can offer a kind of uh, um, report at the end of, uh, of, the, uh, of their FAT. And the student can use this kind of report, can offer this kind of report to the, uh, to the recruiters and to the people involved in their recruitment and the selection as well, because it can be a good um, a good entry point. I think it can be a good entry point. And as I told at the, at the beginning of this conversation, we need to offer a, an effective and customized service to uh, the companies that we are uh, in relation with. And so I think that this could be a good service we offer to our students, but at the same time, it's an excellent tool that we can offer to uh, the companies uh, uh, involved uh, in, in receiving our, our freshly graduate students. Thanks, uh, very interesting. Uh, well, because Franco reminded us about the importance of time management skills, I think probably is now the time to give the floor back to both Rafael and Maria for some uh, final remarks before we close. But thank you very much again. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Franca. Uh, a beautiful uh, window on the future of uh, education from my perspective. Thank you very much for offering this and uh, some concrete idea uh, for developing uh, the work uh, of a call uh, in uh, this uh, uh, you know, direction. Maria, uh, last word for you. No, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming and uh, stay tuned. Our next webinar is uh, next Tuesday.
uh, with Doug O'Brien. Thank you very much. Bye. Well done, Franca. Thank you. Thank you very much, Norris.